Okay, so today we're going to go over building the foundation for elite athletic performance. We're going to talk about why hardware comes first, and we're going to talk about the stages that you need to go through in order to reach your peak human potential in whatever type of athletic performance you choose to excel in. So the first thing that we need to go over is what allows for an elite performance. I choose the word allow for a specific reason, and it's because elite athletes are allowed to have a potential for elite performance because they have these three prerequisites already in place. Typically, what a lot of athletes do is they beat their head against the wall training very hard and not getting anywhere for several years because they do not understand that they're missing something in these prerequisites that they're not pushing to the level that they need in order to have a top-notch performance and max out their potential. A lot of people believe that they have maxed out their genetic potential when they haven't because they're leaving something here on the table in some way, shape, or form that they don't understand is holding them back. What they are, firstly, is adequate structure. This is the body that you were born with or that you develop through training. This is your muscle, tendon, and bone that you use to perform with. Then you have non-conscious nervous system development. These are things that your brain is responsible for, but that your conscious thoughts aren't able to manipulate directly, such as neural drive, neural efficiency, reaction times, etc. Then you have conscious nervous system development. These are things that your brain is also responsible for, but is able to control and manipulate directly through your thoughts. These are things like your mental approach to the game, strategy, tactics, technique, and skills that you've developed that you're able to consciously apply yourself to. The analogy that I most typically use to help people People understand the relationship between these three elements is hardware and software. Your hardware is the actual equipment that you're using to perform and the software is meant to optimize the use of that equipment. So in the case of athletes, your hardware is your physical structure and your brain and your nervous system is your software. When we teach an athlete techniques, skills and optimize their central nervous system, it's meant to optimize the use of the body that they already have. But if that physical hardware that they have isn't able to run the software that we're trying to install onto the system, the system's just going to either crash or we're gonna get very diminished and limited returns. Ultimately, you have the potential, you are allowed to have the potential for an elite performance by having the adequate structure and hardware in place so we can install advanced software onto it, optimize it, and reach a high level of potential. Versus if you were to ignore this, you will be getting diminished returns in the first place no matter what other forms of training that you do. This is why hardware comes first. Many people believe that they've maxed out their genetic potential and are training very hard and beating their head against the wall because they don't understand why they're not making any further gains after two years. They instead have been ignoring the foundational prerequisites that they need to have in order to push past their plateau and reach their actual human potential, which is usually a lot higher than you realize. You just haven't put all three of these prerequisites in place in the right order, which is what we're gonna cover here. Instead of attempting to put lipstick on a pig, we need to understand that you must first build the body that can excel at the elite level for your chosen performance. On the left here, you have my hierarchy of training goals that I share very often. The idea behind this is that you can use any of these elements in order to enhance your potential performance. However, you can't train a higher order element without first building a foundation to an adequate degree or concurrently training at the very least those elements in the lower orders. Foundational health is at the very bottom because your actual health, whether that's metabolic health, your orthopedic health, your otherwise well-being is actually central to everything and that kind of sets the foundation for everything else. That isn't compromised at any level, ideally. However, the point is to understand that it is necessary to have each foundation built up and you're going to get the highest return on investment by building each lower order element up first before focusing on a higher order element. Or at the very least, if you choose to train a higher order element, you could not be training it without concurrently focusing on the lower order element or maintaining it if a foundation there has already been built. Very frequently, people who weren't blessed in the genetic department or had some natural foundational structure that they developed at a young age, they often believe that they need to make up for what they lack in structure by taking a brains over brawn approach. This is a good thing in order to maximize the development of your skill and your nervous system in order to optimize your structure, 
But where people go wrong and where they infringe upon this hierarchy of training goals is that they don't try to mitigate that which they weren't born with by actually developing their structure. They don't try to add the adequate muscle mass, the adequate tendon and connective tissue strength and enhance their physical body so that it can compete and mitigate that which they weren't born with. The idea is, and the central idea of this entire presentation, is that the most important thing is that you try to mimic the ideal body composition that you need and the physical strength structures that an elite athlete might have already been born with so that you can replicate a performance like that. By having that adequate hardware and foundational structure in place, the optimization of the back-end nervous system for the brain and the front-end nervous system of your knowledge and mind can actually excel to an elite level. Many of you will probably note that different types of performances possess different ideal body compositions. All three of these athletes pictured below have wildly different structures they've developed, yet are relatively speaking elite in their respective sports. This implies that there's no singular human structure that is ideal for every type of performance and further emphasizes that building the ideal structure is unique to the type of performance that you want to cultivate and that cultivating a particular frame on your body will enhance your performance in particular categories. Generally speaking, there are three categories that most performances fall into that you can generally group people into and have specific guidelines for how to optimize your structure for. We're going to go over those now, but keep in mind that if you are a recreational athlete or an enthusiast, you are not limited to necessarily falling into any of these categories entirely, and these are merely guidelines that you can use in order to optimize your potential in whatever direction you choose to go through. Ultimately, I believe that being a hybrid athlete is about generally being free to build yourself in whatever type of RPG style, create a character class development that you want to go down. And you can ultimately break any of these rules you'd like, but these are guidelines that you need to understand to follow if you're trying to optimize your performance in any particular direction. So our first structural type are momentum-based athletes. These are reactive or plyometric focused athletes that focus less on accelerating quickly and focus more on emphasizing how they can store and release energy once momentum has already been built up. You're gonna notice that these track and field athletes like high jumpers and long jumpers on the pictures on the right are built a certain way. They focus more on the lightness of their body and the reactive strength of their tendons in order to accelerate them through the air after they have already taken several steps to build up momentum and power those tendons up. Endurance athletes also typically fall into this structural type, even though they're not focused on intensive plyometrics, like a big jump, they do actually move through extensive plyometrics, which are sub-maximal foot contacts in the case of a jogger, repeatedly hitting the ground over a long period of time. And typically their goal is to maintain their velocity over a long period of time through thousands of foot contacts that are submaximal and typically benefit from having a similar structure to these individuals as well. A lightness of the body and a strength of the tendons in order to both perform well intensively and be able to handle a high volume of foot contacts on the ground in order to excel and train is typically beneficial for these people. As well as in this case, it's very highly advisable that staying below 12% body fat would be ideal for optimal performance. Other examples of athletes that fall into this category are performances like parkour, dancing, some types of gymnastics, uh, dunking as well. The second category that some athletes fall into are acceleration plus light opposition. These are athletes where the acceleration and change of direction is central to their performance and physical opposition and the external loads that they encounter are usually sub-maximal. These are usually non-full contact sports, but depending on the sport, position that you play and the individual's play style, you can have variation between the types of subsets and structures that are ideal. What you'll notice right away though, is that these athletes have more muscle mass than the momentum-based athletes. Not only do they have more muscle mass, but they also have a specific allocation of their muscle mass as needed. The purpose of having more muscle mass is it allows you to produce more force, which allows you to produce more power and thus accelerate quickly over the course of a few steps rather than having to focus on gaining momentum first in order to produce a lot of power. They can produce more power because they have more muscle and thus can produce more force and the combination of force and speed allows them to accelerate well. You can also change direction better when your legs are muscular because you can land on the ground, absorb force and redirect it more easily because you have that muscular component and hardware allowing you to have the potential to be explosive. 
you'll notice specifically it's not only just the amount of muscle mass added to these athletes, but the allocation of it is important as well. Specifically, the soccer players, you'll notice that they have very muscular lower bodies and much thinner upper bodies. This is obviously because the upper body is not very central to soccer performance, but it is very central to lower body performance so that they can stop and go very quickly. But for basketball players, in contrast, having a more muscular upper body allows them to play defense and deal with physical opposition that is a little bit more rough and tumble and physical, especially when playing defense, especially when playing defense against the largest players on the court. Uh, their upper body being developed enough so that they don't get muscled around is essential to their performance. However, these athletes, while wanting to be between 9 and 12% body fat so they can be fast and agile and having some muscle mass to accelerate, they do not need to be quite as muscularly developed as our third category. Our third category is acceleration plus heavy opposition. These are athletes where acceleration and change of direction are still key performance qualities, but specifically, their performances require accelerating through maximum opposition or external loads, and that's what the center of their performance is all about. These are usually full contact athletes, as shown here, but strength athletes such as powerlifters, crossfitters, Olympic weightlifters, and strongmen also qualify here, as their opposition is an inanimate implement, such as a barbell or a stone if you're a strong man. Athletes in this category, their performances thrive on maximizing muscular tissue grown from head to toe. This is so that you can maximally accelerate through opponents and prevent opponents from maximally accelerating through you. However, one thing to note is the head to toe concept is extra important for contact athletes. This is because contact athletes need full muscular development in areas that don't matter as much for non full contact sports, such as the neck and the grip. Maintaining muscular development and structure for the neck to be able to absorb impact and prevent the head from being manipulated upon contact with opposition, as well as maintaining very strong grip so that contact with the opposition and ability to manipulate the opposition structure and prevent your own structures from being manipulated is really important for contact athletes, especially in sports like wrestling and rugby. This next point is extremely important, and it's understanding connective tissue versus muscular hardware. It's the idea that connective tissue development is just as important, if not more important, than your muscular development for all athletes. Your hardware and your bodily foundational structure that is made up that you perform with is not just the amount of muscle mass that you carry, but also the tendon strength and bone and ligament strength of the body as well, which momentum athletes particularly depend on, but is important for everyone. Although the muscular development and or the allocation of that muscle isn't equal between all different types of performance needs, connective tissue development is a key requirement for elite performance in any activity. I wrote a five-part series on training your tendons and developing your connective tissue structure to both be healthy and resilient and improve your performance to high levels on Substack. I'm assuming that everyone listening to this has already read all five parts of that. If you haven't, I suggest you do so immediately because we're not going to cover all of that here. The link will be in the description and you should be reading those essays to get an understanding because developing the connective tissue hardware is just as important as the muscular hardware and they are not inseparable. They are both foundational elements of your foundational structure in order to potentially have an elite performance. This should be equally important for all types of athletes. And then what separates the different types of athletes is essentially the FFMI, the fat-free mass index. Some athletes and their respective performance needs have a more elastic emphasis, like momentum-based athletes, versus others have a muscular and acceleration emphasis, like acceleration-heavy athletes. Tendon integrity and your reactive strength is equally important for all these different types of athletes, and thus the defining difference between the performance structure types is the total amount and the allocation of the muscle tissue as well as body fat levels. The fat-free mass index, or FFMI, is a scale rating based on how well-developed your muscular tissue on your bone frame is. Relative to your height, how much muscle mass you have will increase your FFMI rating. An FFMI rating is a good proxy number to see how well developed you are in comparison to other people with your frame. And depending on the type of athletic performance you want to be ideally structured for, you will need to manipulate your FFMI and at your own discretion, the allocation of that mass to where you need in order to excel and have the potential for an elite performance in your type of sport. As stated prior, you have the freedom as a hybrid athlete 
to do that what you want with your FFMI, but these are guidelines in case you want to specialize in a particular type of performance and a particular type of class of athlete. These are general guidelines that you want to follow if you want to be particularly good and excel in a particular performance type. Momentum-based athletes want to have between 20 and 22 FFMI. These are athletes that are going to focus mostly on elastic qualities and not use their muscle to accelerate. However, having a base of muscle will make them less injury prone and allow them to accumulate lots of ground contacts and train hard without overuse injuries. These athletes will probably also benefit from having some level of acceleration ability as well, depending on the sport, because some sports when competitive require more acceleration than others, and the allocation of that muscle mass will likely also be geared towards the legs and minimized in the upper body as well in most cases. Acceleration light athletes like Basketball players and soccer players want to be around 21 to 23 FFMI. These athletes want to have enough muscle mass that they can stop and go, cut, change direction, and muscle through some level of contact, but don't need to be as developed as football players and other contact sport athletes. Acceleration heavies want to be between 24 and 25 FFMI or higher. These are athletes that are essentially maxing out their muscular development as stated from head to toe. Typically, when you see athletes that exceed the 25 FFMI scale, you start to get into the category where the use of performance-enhancing drugs is a valid question. Typically, 25 is considered the absolute natural limit. I prefer that most people don't concern themselves with the natural limit and don't limit themselves to something like that and see how far they can push themselves. And it is common that many athletes in these sports do use performance enhancing drugs in order to increase their FFMI. While I don't advocate anyone doing that, and I believe you should absolutely train naturally for life, it is instructive to understand that many performances are highly aided by increasing their FFMI by using drugs. And that instructs you to understand that these sports in particular are much more aided by adding muscle mass to your frame and therefore expanding your FFMI to as high as possible within the height that you have is ideal for you to get the most out of your potential performance in a sport like that. You can use any online calculator to estimate your FFMI as long as you have a realistic graded estimation of your body fat levels, which you can also get through using an online calculator as long as you're honest with yourself and make appropriate measurements. You can use any online calculator for this. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you want to get a general idea of where you're at so you know what you need to focus on. These are the long-term athletic development stages that you need to go through in order to actualize your human potential in a given performance. We're going to talk about them as if we were training an athlete from their youth. However, your age doesn't determine what stage you're at in life, and instead your level of development does. Some people go through these stages of development very slowly due to suboptimal training or other reasons, and some people haven't even started training properly. So you could be middle-aged or even at an older age and never really reach say, stage two and three because you were not necessarily training appropriately or you allowed these structures to degrade. So it's more like your training age and training progress determines your stage of development rather than the amount of years you've spent somewhere. This is important to understand as many people who have spent many years training suboptimally want to believe that they're ready for stage two and three behaviors when really stage one is what they're missing. Stage one is foundation building. This is usually high school athletes where we go through early stage structural development. This is mostly focusing on building the structure and the body composition that they need that we've talked about throughout this presentation to be optimally capable in their performance long term. However, skills are obviously being drilled and practiced if it's a high skill sport this entire time as those are central to performance. But in terms of strength and conditioning, the focus on this stage should be on building the structural hardware necessary to long term be useful on the field, the court, or in some type of performance at the top level. This means football athletes are gonna focus on maximizing their FFMI and learning how to play football. If athletes have been training for years and get a scholarship and play at a good school, they'll typically be in the ascension phase and mid-stage development by the time they're in college. This is where the structural framework begins to get optimized and filled out. This is also because you cannot necessarily maximize your physical development over the course of a couple of years, especially because youth athletes tend to not necessarily train optimally or get coached optimally anyway. So 
It takes many years and is really a lifetime process of building your structural development and maintaining it. So it is still filled out in the mid-stage process, but there is a little bit more emphasis put on the central nervous system. High level advanced skills and developing the nervous system to be either explosive or in an endurance athlete's case, highly efficient is really what is focused on slightly more at this stage and you have more of a balance between developing structure and being explosive or endurant. The final refinement stage, which is late stage development, this phase is about maintaining the structure that you've spent years developing and the body that you've put years of work into creating and then peaking your nervous system before competition. Now that your nervous system, your skills, and your ability to perform in your sport is very well developed, you now focus on just maintaining your health and being as well prepared for a particular competition just beforehand by tapering your volume, resting, recovering, and using peaking techniques to be as well prepared at that particular day as possible. In cases where athletes are recreational fitness enthusiasts or recreational athletic enthusiasts and not necessarily competitive athletes, this refinement stage will be about maintaining your health and I encourage you to explore different options and expand your physical lexicon of tasks that you can overcome. This is a period where you can begin to reflect upon that which you're capable of and that which you wish to grow into in terms of a physical athlete as you grow older and expand your life experiences. Many people at this stage redefine their goals and seek to find new things and challenges to grind towards. There's one last thing that I want to leave you guys with before we move on, which is George St. Pierre being my main inspiration for the way that I train today. He describes something that they do before fight camps, which I comment on frequently, which is called block training. He doesn't refer to it as block training, but that's essentially what it is. He would take these biannual fight camps structured with periods of training focuses with a long period of general physical preparedness where he focuses on his physical strength and baseline fitness, exploring new techniques and playfully integrating his sport techniques with his game, new sport techniques with his game. This is the off season for most athletes. Then when a fight is coming up, they would spend the majority of their fight preparation doing technical development, focusing on the fundamentals and making them as sound as possible, and then doing more central nervous system and explosive speed work as well as developing his baseline conditioning to peak towards the end. Right before the fight, there is a short phase where they would focus on strategic and tactical specifics for the event and then are focused on tapering the volume down and priming the body with recovery so that it can best perform on fight night. What this essentially is, is a period of training everything all at once, but emphasizing certain elements during different periods of training and the length of that training being based on how fundamental and foundational the element is. Spending a long period on general physical preparedness, physical strength and structure, building muscle and being generally fit is where he would spend most of his time training throughout the year and it paid off because then he was able to peak and prime his nervous system and the rest of his abilities very easily within an eight to 12 week period spending a few weeks working on his power and priming his nervous system, and then a week or two tapering down and peaking himself before a fight was his method of preparing for fights, which at the time in the UFC was highly advanced, but very common in more developed sports at the time, like football and track and field. But he basically set the standard for how mixed martial artists today essentially train for all of their fights. It is the way it is the way that you should peak and train for any type of event. If you don't have a particular event, you should be taking the same concept and applying those stages of athletic development that he condensed into 6-month periods. Do the same thing with longer emphases on your structural development at first, then move into a balance between structural development and explosive work or endurance work, and then refine yourself towards the end. It's essentially a microcosm of the long-term stages that you go through. I recommend most people constantly, concurrently train every quality they wanna get good at, but emphasize that which they are weak at at that moment. If you are weak in terms of the physical structure, that you need to develop to excel in your sport, that should be your focus. If you have the correct structure or are close to it, you can spend more time working on advanced techniques 
and other nervous system developments to make yourself as optimal as possible from the software you're applying to the hardware you already built. And finally, the advanced software and the user skill of using that software is really what allows you to peak your performance to the very highest level. And at that point, that's when you can kind of decide how much volume you need and if you're going to compete in a sport or if you're gonna move on to another challenge or simply maintain the abilities that you already have. Most of the time, when training throughout the year, you should spend periods of six to 12 weeks focusing on one particular quality while other qualities are more on maintenance level depending on the level of your development. Beginners building their structure will tend to get good at everything by training everything all at once. Intermediates will begin to need to focus on one quality at a time while putting other qualities on maintenance levels at that period to make improving gains over time. Realistically, you're gonna go through periods of six to 12 weeks or longer where you emphasize a particular quality before changing programs and moving on. By cycling programs and blocks like this in your training, you'll continually make gains in every category throughout the year and every year reach a new level that you could not achieve prior. So essentially that's the end of the presentation. I just wanted to get this point across so that you guys understand what you need to work on if you're missing something. The vast majority of people do not look like the performers they want to perform like, and that's what's holding them back. We all have some immutable characteristics in ourselves. It's hard to change your bone frame, you can't change your height, and certain genetic factors are immutable. However, our genetic potential is much higher than most people realize because they do not know how to make the most out of what is actually malleable on their body and they don't know what to target. There are many cases of athletes who were deemed not capable of competing at the elite level but with a good training program were able to target the things that they need to make transformative changes in their athletic ability. If you follow a process like this long term, a transformative change in yourself so that you can maximize whatever genetic potential you truly have is realistically possible. However, it requires time, diligence, and education on how to do so. What I talk about is usually this type of information and how to do so on my Substack in depth. I have Dozens of articles that I've written on techniques, methods, exercises to focus on, strength standards, etc., that you can do to create these changes in yourself. And this presentation is meant to guide you so that you know what the goals are when starting out and what direction you need to move your own body in. So lastly, all I want to say is thanks for listening to this entire thing. I appreciate you guys putting up with how much detail I put into this stuff. I hope it's valuable to you. If you did find it valuable, please like and share it. Subscribe to these channels. And let other people know about it and give it to them. It helps me tremendously and it can help someone else in their development. It helps a lot of young people looking to get scholarships and wanting to play sports when they're competing. Uh, it's really transformative for a lot of people. It's information that I wish I had when I was younger that I had to learn the hard way. I'm trying to give this to you guys for free, the easy way. Um, if you do find this useful, let me know personally as well. I need to know what type of content you guys actually enjoy. If this was too long or boring or lame, then I want to know that so I don't make this stuff for you guys anymore and I make the things that you guys do want to know about. Please let me know what type of content you guys want to hear next and then just post that below, comment, message me, what have you, and uh, we'll get it done. So far, I have every little bit of content requested from everyone so far this year in the pipeline and it is coming, uh, but those that are... Those that speak up, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. So speak up, let me know what you want to hear, and we'll go over it in depth. And let me know what type of content format you enjoy the most. Thanks again for listening, and take care. Like and subscribe for more.